All right, everyone, here we are with ticker symbol DKNG, DraftKings Inc. And before we jump into this chart, I want to say welcome to all my first time viewers and investors. Welcome to my channel, Invest for Tomorrow. To all my subscribers, welcome back. And I want to give a shout out to the subscriber, investor, and viewer that actually took the time and commented down below on one of my videos to make this video. And I'm excited to do it, not just to help you, but I hope I help many other investors that probably had the same question as you and want to see if this is a good entry and what's going on with the chart. So I try to do this as much as I can to implement requests. Um, I apologize if I haven't been able to get to your requests. It's just me, one guy versus the whole market. The market has almost 7,500 ticker symbols. And I try to do the most concentrated ones that a lot of investors are focused on and also are seeking uh, obviously the the cues and the sense of direction of where the, the company might be going and also the ticker symbol itself where's the value going and so forth so i try to focus on where i can help the biggest amount of people and the most amount of people because that's what i'm here for to help all of you guys with these cues to be well equipped for the next trading days or the days to come so let's go ahead and look at DraftKings so DraftKings has been in an upward direction obviously IPO was last year and it's been rising it dipped right it was rising early in the in the in the year and it dipped obviously when the dip came but it held itself up above ten dollars that was a really good sign of how many people are invested in this company and it actually started to rise, leveled off for some time, and it rose up again. So before we zoom in here, I want us to see some important numbers here. So we already broke through one of the first important support levels, $47. The next one is not that far from where we're at. It's actually $40.40. See if I can land exactly on there, right there. $40.40. I'd write that down. Super important number. That's $4 away from where we're at. If it breaks through that, it could be on its way to newer lows. And then the next one's down here at $34 and some change. I mean, we wouldn't want to worry about $34 and some change right now. But if it was to work, head its way down there, then this is completely filled with profit taking. And if it was to drop down here and be a bigger circle, right? it'd be uncertainty mixed in with tremendous profit taking when it comes to that because the highest point that this has reached is $64 and some change. That's what the bulls need a breakthrough. That's one of the most important numbers right now for this to hit newer highs and newer resistance levels. Right now, it's currently at 4440 and we're going to look at what's important for Monday, right? And also the rest of the week. I hope that those numbers are helpful and keep in mind forty dollars and forty cents four dollars away from where we're at is one of the most important numbers if this was to break through this support level to be the next support level and if that breaks through that this could be well on its way to newer lows so as we zoom in here the 50-day moving average is 45.91 i'd write that down as long as we're below it we're in bearish territory the moment we're above it we're in bullish territory. So it's super important for the bulls to actually break through that to reach newer highs. Now, before getting there, the bulls are going to want to break through resistance and resistance is $45.84. They need to turn that into a support to break away, hit newer resistance levels, hit newer highs, and get back into bullish territory in that trajectory and that direction. Now, if the bulls break through that, they're not that far away from the 50 day moving average. So they could be well back onto bullish territory, but it does not signify that bullish territory has been confirmed until they break through the resistance level in bullish territory, which is here at 4612. So keep that in mind. That does not signify that the bulls have gained control until they break through a resistance level of 4612 in bullish territory to pull away from the 50 day moving average in an upward direction. Now, on the other hand, we have what the bears want. The bears right now are dominating this. The bulls were able to appear just one time within the whole entire week. 
right, which was right here, and it happened for just a, a moment of two days, and it was a leveled off run. It wasn't even like a run with momentum to continue up. It was kind of leveled off, and the bears reappeared. So the bears are going to try to break through this lowest point reached in this bearish run, which is here where we're at right now, and it's our support level of 43.52. I want to emphasize to all investors, pay close attention to how the stock is reacting and how quickly it's breaking through 43.52 or is it hanging out sideways giving a chance for the bulls to reappear and bring this one back up so that tug of war is going to be interesting but if 43.52 gets broken through we're already in bearish territory and that's just going to bring us deeper into bearish territory so i'd pay very close attention and i want to emphasize this to the behavior of the stock the inflow the outflow and who is dominating the charts as always if you found this video helpful and informative please do so and subscribe share this with your friends and community don't forget to click on the bell to not miss a single video that i post and don't forget to hit the like button to let me know you watch this video thank you guys so much for watching and let's make some money at the end of this video, there's going to be a pop-up video, and I go into detail about the S&P 500 index and how it's been rising up several points on scheduled dates. What happens on those scheduled dates, which are the dates that I've circled here on the chart and we're going to see for ourselves? Well, the S&P 500 index rises up several points, and by doing so, they're bringing up several ticker symbols, not all of them, but most of them, up with them. And these ticker symbols are rising up 30 cents to three dollars per share and i know it doesn't sound like a lot but per share that does add up and one thing i am really big on is profits if you put a dollar into the market and you get out with two dollars you've made profits you've done what the whole purpose of being in the market is for to maximize profits and minimize losses and with the federal reserve pumping the markets on these scheduled dates bringing the s p 500 index up also brings up individual ticker symbols with them and again 30 cents to three dollars may not sound like a lot of profit per share but that does add up and like i say profits are profits so we're going to look here at some of the dates so that you guys can see what i talk about in the video and it's a weekly series i wouldn't want you guys to miss out on it definitely click on the video as it pops up at the end of the video and check it out but here we are with one of the first pumps in the scheduled dates pumps so the first one since the last time that they had released this they released this on september 14th and the next one's coming up on october 14th which is like a week from now and on the 15th they scheduled it and as you can see this is the 14th and the 15th is this big green bar and it rose up so on the 14th we were at around 33.84 and it rose up to 34.20 i mean that's 40 points risen on the s p 500 index and that's creating that catalyst for individual ticker symbols to rise up 30 cents to three dollars we're going to look at another one here and the next one was on september 22nd and here we are on the 21st after falling from that last pump and the market had been falling and you could see that there is volatility on every single day of the market before the dates of the pumps but on the dates of the pumps are the days that the most green happens for the most part not every time but for the most part but on the 21st which was a monday it was rising up and it rose up to this point here and the next one was the 22nd so this is the last 21st candlestick and this is the first 22nd candlestick and we were at 3270 this one rose up all the way up here to this point right here this was the last 22nd candlestick to 33.19. I mean, if we go back, we were at 32.70, 33.19. That's almost 50 point jump here for the S&P 500 index. And again, individual ticker symbols rose up with it and it created that catalyst a little bit before the anticipation. And on that date, it rose up. Now on this next pump, which was a little bit different, there was a catalyst form beforehand and it rose up to these highs on the 28th of about 33.59. It actually dipped on the date of the next pump, which we see it here, which was on the 29th of September. And the next one was on the 6th 
which just happened yesterday and it actually slightly dipped now not every time is these pumps going to rise up the market like we've seen here by a lot of points but it still rises it back up or levels it off from hitting newer lows and leveling off the market itself because if we look at the previous notes that i did beforehand it was actually rising up with it the volatility was there but you were able to buy like for example how we bought here on the 15th and it rose up well it's been falling and then very volatile here up and down beforehand you can buy at the beginning of the schedule pump dates and hold a couple weeks and ride out several pumps and you were going on your way up but right now even as the market's going down it's a great opportunity to take advantage of the fact that the federal reserve is pumping the markets and there's an opportunity to make profits so here we are on the 29th and it fell to lows of 33.28 and it rose up to these highs here of 33.49 i know it doesn't sound like a lot but that's still a 20 point jump after dipping and recovering and then it continued to work its way up to newer highs now here on the sixth which on the fifth it started to rise it leveled off this is the last candlestick of the fifth coming up right now and we're about to see it here yes this is the last candlestick of the fifth and it rose up and all the way to the last candlestick of the six it rose up another 20 points i mean we're down here and it ended up around here so right now something i'm noticing is that these pumps are creating less of an effect on the market but it's creating that upward direction from falling to newer lows but it's still having the market rise up and even though the s p 500 index is rising several points there are individual ticker symbols rising up like i said 30 cents to three dollars check out the video i go into more detail i don't want you guys to miss out on this great information click on it and thank you guys so much for watching and let's make some money